It's a brisk early morning on the streets of a typical Brazilian city. With more than two million people, Curitiba is very typical in size, but most untypical in what goes on here. By Brazilian standards, Curitiba is not that far from Brazil's best-known city, Rio de Janeiro, about 1,000 kilometers away. These people are the city's recyclers and garbage collectors. Nothing remarkable in that these days, but Curitiba was well ahead of its time by being one of the first in the world to start such a city-wide service in the late 1980s. The recycling crew wear appropriately green overalls. The things they recycle help to make this pioneering city one of the most pleasant to live and work in, despite its heavy industry base. They are part of the extraordinary story of how Curitiba escaped the globally all too familiar consequences of rapid change. Look around you and you won't see the usual sprawl of squatter settlements, heavy traffic congestion or widespread environmental damage. And it's all because of one man who had a vision for this once down at heel town. Founded by the Portuguese in 1693 and existing on agriculture and cattle. Curitiba's principal architect and one-time mayor, Jamie Lerner, put into practice his philosophy that people matter more than economics when designing a city. Durante toda a minha vida eu observei que todas as cidades que separar as atividades econômicas dos assentamentos humanos, nessas cidades aconteceu o desastre. Lana believes in changes that are small scale, cheap and participatory, such as turning a busy street into a pedestrian mall. His core belief is that to make such dramatic and effective changes, a city must have the political will and the backing of its citizens. Bom, e aí, é, eu, eu, eu acho que qualquer cidade no mundo, qualquer que seja o tamanho, pode fazer é, mudanças significativas, pode ter melhoras significativas em menos de dois anos. In this way, Curitiba was transformed from a center for processing agricultural products into an industrial powerhouse. These days, town planners come to Curitiba as if to Mecca to see the wonders that have been achieved. One of the ways Curitiba has avoided becoming a mess is through its pioneering recycling and garbage operations. When Curitibans hear the bell ring, they are taking part in a scheme begun decades ago. Firstly, they have separated their garbage into two categories, organic and inorganic for pickup by two kinds of trucks. The green team are the recyclers, collecting cans, glass, metal, plastics and paper, while avoiding that worldwide dustman hazard, the neighborhood dog. The United Nations has awarded Curitiba its highest environmental prize for its recyclable waste scheme. So far, enough recyclables have been collected to fill several thousand skyscrapers. The 
recyclables go into a plant itself built of recycled materials. Paper, plastics and cans are sorted here, then bundled up for processing elsewhere. The paper becomes paper again. The plastics are remodelled and the old cans are turned into new cans for a fraction of the cost of making them from raw materials. Curitiba recycles nearly two-thirds of its garbage, one of the highest rates anywhere on the planet. The recycling scheme costs no more than the old landfill system. The city is much cleaner and there are more jobs because of it. Many of those employed here could find work difficult to get. There are recent immigrants and people with disabilities. There is even a library, available to school children and stocked entirely from people's throwouts. And a museum, which even has treasures like this statue. Na coleta do lixo, nós temos coisas fantásticas que nós achamos aqui. Coisas que as pessoas jogaram fora. Como, por exemplo, esta obra, essa escultura aqui em mármore, era muito valiosa porque ela tem um selo aqui que identifica da onde que essa obra saiu, do Museu do Louvre de Paris. Another way Lerner has made the environment better is through what he calls the solution of the parks. From the air, we can see how important these green spaces are to the bustling city. He solved the city's persistent flood problem by turning riverbanks into parks. Many trees were planted and disused factories recycled into sports facilities. This also stops squatters occupying these areas and creating slums. By diverting excess water from the rainy season into the lakes, flooding is a thing of the past. <laughs> Developers of skyscrapers were allowed a few extra stories on their buildings. In return, they either created more green space at the bottom of the skyscrapers or paid cash which the city used to fund low-income housing. The main strategy of the city was to answer two main questions. One is where the city wants to grow. What's the business of the city? That was the two main questions. The city's integrated transport system is the key to Curitiba's success. Lerner and his team devised a system using buses to move people both quickly and cheaply to and from the city. This is one of five main road axes along which the city develops and spreads out. In the centre are lanes dedicated to buses only. Red means an express bus with few stops. It's part of a system of coloured buses which feed people onto these express routes. Orange feeder buses bring people from the outlying settlements to the express routes. 
green inter-district buses link suburbs outside the city centre with the express routes. Grey buses link some suburbs directly to the city centre and make many more stops than the express buses. X marks the spot where interchange terminals allow passengers to change buses and go anywhere for only one fare. What is outstanding in this city is the relative lack of traffic congestion, usually caused by commuters travelling to work in their own cars. Most town planners would try to solve such congestion in a city of Curitiba's size by building a subway. But this was far too expensive. Instead, Curitiba developed its above-ground system which now carries as many people and at the same speed as a subway but is 500 times cheaper. How does it do this? A normal bus can carry about 1,000 passengers a day. Using an express bus lane boosts that to nearly 2,000. Using articulated buses increases the number to more than 3,000. But then Curitiba trumped itself with its bi-articulated buses, each of which carry up to 4,000 passengers each day. This means about the same number of passengers are carried in rush hour as on the considerably more expensive metro in Rio de Janeiro. The speed and efficiency of the system is boosted with these unique tubular bus stops designed by Lerner himself. At each raised tube bus stop, passengers pay their fares in advance. This means bus drivers do not have to take fares and thus doubling the number of passengers travelling each hour. Together with extra wide doors on the buses, this means people can board quickly. Faster loading and unloading means less idling and less pollution. Such speed and simplicity of operation has cut Curitiban's travel times by a third. Bus companies are paid by the number of kilometres they cover rather than the number of passengers they carry. This means the less popular routes are well serviced and bus companies don't fight over the routes with the most passengers. Low-income earners only spend 10% of their income on transport which is low for Brazil. Although the city has more than half a million private cars, the vast majority of commuters take the bus. As a consequence of this very successful public transport system, Curitiba has one of the lowest rates of air pollution in Brazil and a much lower per capita fuel consumption. And this is surprising given that the business of the city is mostly heavy manufacturing. The international company Volvo has a big presence here. In 1992, Curitiba, in partnership with Volvo Brazil, developed and built the 25-metre-long bi-articulated bus. Volvo was attracted to the city by its relatively highly educated workforce. Curitiba has one of the oldest universities in Brazil, so education has always been highly prized in this unique place.
Volvo's superbuses were so successful in carrying large numbers of passengers quickly and cheaply that council plans for a light rail system were scrapped. Like most Brazilian cities, Curitiba is also home to some very poor residents. As part of its social charter, the city has placed great emphasis on finding novel ways to help low-income earners. One of the most highly regarded is the Green Exchange. We had an overproduction in the green belt, and the people in, that works in agriculture was just throwing away all the products. And we had the idea to make things uh, linked so that in low income population areas, we stimulate people to separate and to collect recyclable garbage and make the exchange for these uh, Greenbelt products. This exchange system works well because the city's garbage trucks cannot fit down the narrow laneways of the squatter settlements. So the people bring their sorted garbage to the trucks and get food or bus tickets in return. The city doesn't have to pay for expensive road widening, surplus food does not go to waste, and residents are encouraged to use the bus system. This man's fridge weighs quite a lot, so in return he gets quite a lot of bananas. And that fridge ends up in the recycling plant. O câmbio verde surgiu em torno de, de 1980 e hoje nós estamos já com vários anos né, de câmbio verde. Hoje, né, nesse dia, nós estamos atendendo 30 mil famílias, né, recolhendo por mês 300 toneladas de lixo. One of the most intriguing actions was the way Lerner and his team went about creating what was then an urban planning novelty, a mall in the heart of the city. This was a crucial plank of Lerner's platform to create life in the city and make it a place for people. He wanted people rather than cars using the streets. The mall had to be built very quickly because the shop owners and car drivers were unlikely to accept such a radical change. Lana wanted it done in an amazing 48 hours. That way, shop owners would be unable to take out a court injunction to stop the works. Então, o, eu pedi ao meu secretário de obras que preparasse eh, a obra. Eh, nós preparamos o projeto e que eu disse que era importante fazer em 48 horas esta obra. Aí ele me olhou, pensou que eu estava maluco. Ele me disse, olha, em seis meses dá para fazer. Daí eu disse, não, 48 horas. Até que nós chegamos à conclusão que teria que ser feito em 72 horas. E nós começamos uma sexta-feira à noite e concluímos numa segunda-feira à noite. The works caused a revolution in the city. And as expected, the business owners expressed strong opposition. 
To stop car and bus drivers using the new mall regardless, children were brought into the area for painting activities. Many years later, we can see this activity is now a well-established tradition.